Hey everyone, this is Ranger Rob and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast. And before we get started, because uh, uh, we, we've been making this poor guy sit in his car uh, for hours, <laughs> for hours and hours, and he just drank a giant Diet Coke. And so I don't know how long he's going to last after this. But anyway, as we're getting ready to go online, uh, Rev, um, <laughs> which watches our show and leaves comments all the time, and we really appreciate that, popped on and said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this button. And he said it worked. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, your real name is Chris. And you, a lot of people call you Rev, and you're yes, um, you're from North Carolina. Yes, and, sir. But today you're in a car in Alabama. I am in Alabama. <laughs> yes. Now before I get going, I need to introduce my host too. Of course, we got John and Debbie from Pig Hobby Homestead, and then below Hi, that everyone. we have Amy. What's that? Hi, <laughs> and then down below Hi. that is Amy from Dragonfly Farm. So, so there. Uh, so uh, what we found out about Rev so far is he, uh, you have IPP pigs, which are Idaho pasture pigs. This is your first year. You're mating your piggies now. And so you're going to be blessed with about, what, March, April, May with piglets? And so, Something like that, yeah. yeah. I bet you that's exciting. Have you ever, ever actually had piglets before? No, no, not of any kind, no. So uh, hey, we're Rob. real excited. That's uh, that's why we're trying to control it and not have so many. I'm only going to let him, you know, meet one of the ladies at a time. You know. Yeah, uh, Jack, do you hear the odd? Um, I got a note here that says there's no audio. Yeah. Um, is that true? <laughs> How about so now? Huh. Well, anyway, you got um, audio now. I got it. Yeah, everything I got's working right. Let me do one little check here. Um, I know. That's how I know we, that we're good. Audio now. I, I don't know what happened there, but we're good. We're good. So, uh, so oh, yeah. all is good. <laughs> Jack's confusing us. So, uh, uh, five by five, he says. So we uh, uh, now with the piglets. You said you've never had piglets before. No, sir. So uh, I can guarantee you, after you have piglets. You will be so addicted to Idaho pasture pigs. It won't even be funny. There is no, you. The, the cuteness is amazing. Uh, it's totally, totally fun, except for maybe the castration part. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the you know that's the one part I'm really not looking forward to. But uh, that's something you got to do, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, when you really think about if you don't do it, what problems you get have, and the other thing is you know it makes you yeah, the taste meat taste bad. And, yeah, and uh, it's so you. worth it. So, yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, my um, we have actually our one of our breeders that we bought our pigs for were nice enough to come over and train us, and we we're all there. And yeah. uh, I didn't do the hands on because there was just so many people watching, but I had to do it two times, well, one time for a different batch of piglets, and uh. It was a little nerve wracking. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't imagine it being a, a grand old time. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, oh, I don't know. I, we had a heck of a party. Well, yeah, but we weren't. Do, you weren't doing the castration either, though. It's fine if you're watching. Yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I don't even have those parts, and I felt it. <laughs> well, that's true too. True. <laughs> yeah, that was really weird. Um, but yeah, uh, this year it's a little different. We're going to do castration, ear tags at the same time, and possibly I'm thinking about, I don't know yet, if I'm going to do the uh, respiratory vaccine that they have for pigs. Um, mm. I, I mean, we did really good without it, and I'm not sure if I want it. I'm going to, I want to talk to a lot more breeders and get their opinion about it. But I have this thing about vaccines is like, but if it's been you know around a long time and proven, I'm good with it, you know. So, um, but I, I might do that because I've always noticed that piglets seem to be very susceptible to um, to breathing issues when they're little, and so. Well, that, uh, that's because we have that powder dirt too. Yeah. So unlike North Carolina with all that pretty Where grass. They have grass. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not jealous. We, 
So uh, <laughs> yeah. So so Rev, can you also uh, you told us once already, but no, we're online. But can you uh, tell us once again what kind of uh, animals you're raising and uh, maybe a little bit? You said you came from. You just bought your place not too long ago. And, yeah. Yeah. And I did we, uh, oh, go we ahead. raised, we raised, uh, uh, we came from the beach from the Outer Banks of North Carolina, um, from a little town called Corolla, um, on the beach. And, uh, we bought a farm in a little town called Boonville, um, uh, North Carolina, which is out near Winston Salem. It's in the, it's just in the foothills. It's re it's beautiful, you know, uh, um, and we raise the IPPs and we do, uh, um, meat chickens as well um in the summertime and we also have egg layers um and i got a little jack russell and i got a uh, german shepherd as well um we we're planning on we we're planning on doing some hydroponic type stuff like you're doing uh, Rob, cool. uh um like the uh, rail style um this right, this year as, as well um we have a little farm called cranberry creek farm and we have we have a creek um on the back side of our property it's about it's 11 and a half acres um nice. and uh it's yeah like you guys saying you guys are supplementing with hay right now up there in, in oregon i'm still i'm i'm doing the wagon wheel uh, rotation with the with the pigs um still you know in the middle of january no problem right now now i don't know how that will be in the future maybe in the future i won't be able to do that but uh um yeah, it's it is a blessing to uh, to still have grass that you're facing eat right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Now you said yeah. the meat birds. Um, you're you're doing red rangers. Cornish this Tom. year we are. Gonna, yeah, we're going to do red rangers. Um, meat birds are, are great. Um, you know they're really easy. The only real expense is the uh, is the plucker. You know, uh, and you only buy that once. You got one. <laughs> he just bought one. You know? yeah. yeah, we just bought one. So yeah, it's they're not question, cheap. They're not cheap. No. I have a question well, about your Cornish cross. Um, yes, did you have any problem with their legs and stuff? No, the um, I have heard of that before. Like they grow so big that their legs can't even hold their weight or whatever. You know. Yeah. Um, the only the only problem we really had with them was they grow so fast that their feathers couldn't keep up and they looked ugly. And I had to keep telling my wife that that doesn't really matter. You know, when it's in the oven. You know, That's so, uh, back. yeah, we haven't, we never, we never had a problem with the chickens at all, to be honest with you. They've been, and how many did good. you do at a time? We did, we did 25. We did two different times where we, where we butchered them. Uh, we did 25 at a time. Yeah. So, I mean, the, other than that, those two days, I mean, those are, those are, that's a tough day, you know, uh, but I, we have twin boys, uh, that live with us that are 21. So we got them working on it too. So uh, it wasn't, but so bad, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So but, uh, but I, I guess we'll have a processing party, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, we're, we're talking about doing the turkey on um, Saturday, and I told Dustin. John said you could borrow the plucker even just to try yep. it out, to see if it does a turkey. And usually, oh, I know we, it will. Yeah, I know, but I mean, give it a test run or whatever, <laughs> and and. Because we usually skin our birds when we process them, and I I thought Dustin would say no, I'll just skin it, but he said no, that 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 would be good if we if we pluck him. So yeah. okay, well we'll bring it over. All right, <laughs> that'll be fun. Well, don't oh, you do that without me. Uh oh, you're gonna blow up over there. Somebody. Hey, Mark, <laughs> if I if I sit for too long, my truck starts beeping. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. I would, you know, what you said before. You don't need to keep like I, I'm sitting here anyway. I'm waiting for this for the store to close so I can go to work. <laughs> so I, I would just be sitting here watching a Ranger Rob video online if if I wasn't here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I paid him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you uh, when you did your first processing, was that like your real first processing of birds? Um, no, um, we went to, uh, like a, like a processing clinic, you might say, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we had, there's another, uh, homesteader on, on YouTube, um, uh, uh, a, a channel called So the land. Yep. And, and, uh, we went to one of his clinics and, uh, we processed, we learned how to process them there. It's like two hours away from my house. Uh, so yeah. one Saturday, me and my wife went and, uh, learned how to process them there and, you know, brought that knowledge home. 
it was real. It was really uh, a great a great thing to do. I'm glad that we did it and not just went in blind on ours. You know, you can watch all the videos cool. you want. You know what I mean. But in, yep. until you got that lung in your fingertips, you, you, you don't really know. Yeah, I've always wanted to kind of meet that guy from Soda Land. Um, it's not I've totally like all the other guys. Yeah, his videos are very um, down to earth. Um, his wife is the real genius, I think, Miss Lorraine. She was she really? was really nice, and she you, you know she's just one of the people that when you talk to her, you're like, oh, this lady's smart. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she's the genius. Yeah, I like I like to meet them someday. We're so far away though, but it seems like all the homesteaders that are doing training and all that stuff all seem to be in North Carolina. And it's like, uh, guys, is you know, and nobody talks, about the North, <laughs> nobody talks about the Northwest. <laughs> well, you know, uh, between that and the grass, maybe that should tell you something. You know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the only person we'll we have figure it out. Is, uh, you can ship um, some of that to us. <laughs> I think uh, Melissa, <laughs> Melissa Norris is about the only one I really see a lot of in the Northwest, and she's up in by Sumas. Uh, in Washington State, up by the Canadian border, and uh, but uh, yeah, that's the only one. All the rest are over there. <laughs> yeah, oh, it, well, it's just it's, it's just easy. Only you know, homesteading in North Carolina is easy. Anybody could do it. Only people like you guys could do it up there where you're doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah we want to. So, yeah, we want yeah, to do it for the I'm, challenge. I'm playing in the minor leagues. You know what I mean? You guys, are <laughs> you guys are pros. So you don't have to worry about going out and breaking ice and all that time all the time and uh, freezing no, temperatures? only in the morning sometimes. Only in the mornings. Wow. Yeah, we got it all day long. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the other day <laughs> it was so dark. The other day it was so dark here that it was like morning all day long. I totally wow. remember that day. <laughs> Horrible. Do you guys yeah, have well, trouble with your do you guys have trouble with your uh solar chargers? up there when it's when it's oh, like yeah. that because sometimes it's like three two or three days with mine i have to get the battery charger out yeah yep. yeah you do it's i see good. i'm glad it's, it's not just me. there <laughs> yeah it's really a bummer when you got a boar trying to keep his fence uh, lit up and you find out oh it's a red light going off on there maybe that's a dead <laughs> batteries might have something to do with it <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, yeah, yeah we don't use electric anything no electric fences or anything Oh, you don't use hard fencing? Yeah, we, we don't have a board yet. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm building a barn. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, one thing I have noticed about Idaho pasture pigs is everybody, and I, I'm, I'm you go to in Monday's video. I have a video come out just about Idaho pasture pigs. Everybody says, "Oh, they're so family friendly." I'd let my kids in there and the whole thing, and I it's like, and I could see how that statement's true. When the kids, when the pigs are kind of young or maybe even a little bit in teenage, they're kind of fun. They're kicking the butt, um, and then they start growing up. <laughs> then they start getting. Go ahead. It's more about their size for me because I, I have a five year old and all my kids are midgets, like small, small, like me. Yeah. All my kids are small, and my five year old. It, it's it's more about the pig's size than it is their temperament. Their temperament remains great. It's their size that becomes a problem and right. strength. I agree. I agree. I agree. So what? So the add-on to it, I, I want to add to that is, uh, I'm always very comfortable. I'm actually my sows are pretty good, even with their piglets. Um, but once I get Sparky, um, I noticed that when I watch the videos and go back and watch everything, Sparky still was not at his full size, even after we had the piglets and stuff. I was looking at the videos. I'm going. You know, Sparky looked pretty small, so he actually got bigger even more uh, since then. So, and then um, he didn't have tusks before. <laughs> and so he changed to, a, not to be a mean pig, but he's become a boar. And and, and he acts like a boar. And, and really, that's, his head is full of just one thing, <laughs> is go, go find the sows. And so... Whatever it takes to do that, he gets pushy. He could move his head real aside. And, and everybody I've talked to has a boar are all showing their scars from their boars that have hit the side of their leg and you know and punctured them. And the, it doesn't mean he's a mean pig. It just means he's a boar. 
And so I, I just get a little worried about these guys who are doing videos saying, oh, this is such a docile pig. It's a good pig. And you scratch your ears, you rub your tummies. And it's like, T tell me if you say that again when they become a year old. That's a total different pig. And yep. so I, I think even in that, a 10 month rule. <laughs> yeah. And I got a feeling. Amy, I ain't going to deal freezer with ca Freezer camp. Yep. Yeah. Because, uh, when Amy's ready to get to the butcher stage for the one you have, I think you might think a little more leery about, even though she's a sweet pig you have, uh, your little seven-year-old. Um, uh, that could be a little scary just because the pigs aren't trying to be mean, but their nature can catch you off guard and knock her over. And, and there's a couple of steps where those hooves and she's hurting. <laughs> so uh, it makes me scared. Yeah. Now, boar, uh, I would be terrified. Um, even though Sparky's the greatest boar in the world. And I and the reason I want to talk about this is because I'm hearing all this, oh, they're so docile and great for the family. I want to get a pig that's good for my kids. And I go, I don't maybe a cooney cooney could be they don't have enough legs to pick the step over a person. Are you talking about my pig again? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, guys, I want to make sure I send the message out as Yes, they are docile. They're wonderful pigs, but you still got to be smart, still got to be cautious. And with kids, make sure you have safety and have an adult in there. And the best thing ever is a pig board. <laughs> I can tell you that. So, anyway, that's enough preaching on my part. But yeah. So, um, now your pigs you have now, Rev, are they teenagers? How, old, how many months old are they? Um, I, the girls, uh, my female gilts, um, are a little over 10 months old. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're sizable. Um, and the, 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 the males are eight and a half. I think it's eight and a half months. They are, um, something along that line. So they're, they're a little bit behind the girls, but, uh, um, that won't hold I mean, them up. Oh, that, that doesn't make a bit of difference. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I, I actually, I actually moved them um, across the yard, so now they're they're in the same building as the females, but they're they're there's a there's a barrier in between, and it doesn't seem like he's uh, he, it's going to hold them back at all. Just like you said, it seems like uh, and the girls as well. They're right on the other side. They're like, hey, what's going on there? You know what I mean? Uh, oh yeah. Somebody, somebody's in the barn. I'm sorry. Do you raise yours in a barn? Um, well, the the they have like a it used to be a horse stall, um, uh -huh. and it's and it's in the middle of I have two of them and one of them's in the middle of my property, and um, the horse stall is kind of like their little uh, bed area, I guess you would say, and then I have uh, I have uh, two different uh, uh, fences running off of that uh, off of that, so that's like the 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 hub of the wagon wheel, if you might say, you know what I mean? So. They're all they're in there, but they're they're always getting moved around in the grass. So I have yeah. I have split that hub into two, and now he's on he's on one side and they're on the other side, and you know they're yeah. they're both saying open that door up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they they can go in and out when they want. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But they're oh. they they can't go. I I have them split where they can't go. One By they can't go. Other. Yeah, to each other, but they both can go in and out, of, in and out of their building whenever they want. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's how we're that's how we're doing ours too. Is the 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 sleeping area is on the inside, but they'll have the paddock on the outside where they can go in and out. That's exactly what I have too. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but we're working on that. If it ever gets warm out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's already working on the barn. You know, he's up. <laughs> He's working on the chicken coop. I can't do any. I got to lay brick. And I can't do it in 25 degree weather. That's right. Yeah, that's he's, right. He's working on a chicken coop because I have the, all those chickens coming. I have six turkeys coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I have eggs in the incubator. <laughs> so, Would yeah. You, he's got gotten that so there. <laughs> so, yeah, you need to break in the weather pretty bad. Yeah, you need to move up North Carolina. That's what you need to do. That's I uh, mean, I've heard that before. Happened. I lived over yeah. there. Are you either that or <laughs> either that or a rev, a rev just needs to man up and start coming over here in the Northwest. Well, you need to come over here and show us how to do chickens. Process <laughs> That's right. Chickens. 
Wouldn't that be great to have them over to do chicken processing yep. with us? That'd be fun. I just just uh, to let you know the uh, Appalachians; those are low hills compared to ours. <laughs> oh yeah, I, oh yeah, I'm I'm aware of that, and I'm glad yeah, that they are. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, small town uh, tourist, which is John Smith, uh, he's actually coming up here to visit us. So I'm I think really? June third around June, around around June uh, third, he'll be up here. I don't know how long. But he's going to also be doing some of his small town tourist videos and stuff too, uh, and then we're we're going to turn him into a homesteader. So, <laughs> you know, I want to I want to meet him. Oh, you'll sure. love you'll love John. He's great. So um, he's from Arizona. For those uh, 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 don't know, and I highly recommend you check his channel out. He does uh, uh, documentaries basically on small towns, and so he's going to work his way up here from Arizona to hit all the small towns to do more videos. And of course we've got some great stuff here for him to film for small towns. So yeah, it's, uh, that'll be fun. So uh, by the time John gets here and we have Rev over here, we could really do a lot of chickens. Yeah. <laughs> all 50 of them. That's right. <laughs> and, and, a, and six turkeys. That's right. So uh, yeah. Cause he, in jail. Cause he's a professional. <laughs> Purdue ain't got nothing on you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so uh do you uh you said you're all your, are you all your kids older than they're not little ones no uh, right? no my my boys are uh are 21 um but they're they have a uh touch of autism so they're gonna be with us for a little while but uh they don't they love the farm you know what i mean and uh yeah. uh um it's really nice to have them out there to be honest with you yeah yeah Get therapy yeah. Yeah, yep. they are. Uh, um, you know, uh, it's it's not like uh, it's too debilitating. Too debilitating. It's just socially where they have a problem. But uh, um, they're just just uh, uh, great to have on the farm though with us. Yeah, I have a grandson great. that has autism. It's a uh, it's you know it's a tough fight. You know what I mean? But uh, it's 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 not that it's it's it it can be okay. It, it can be okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we all. I think uh, some of my grandkids have a attention deficit type stuff going on, and um, yeah, it's challenging for them too. So, yeah. and they love to come to the farm, and it's amazing how quickly they become uh, little cowboys <laughs> and girls. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of fun. So and then right uh, back in the house for the video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so how funny you doing when over there, I, Amy. What's that? I said, "How you doing over there?" Yeah. I'm just I, I'm enjoying getting to know everybody more. Yeah. You look you, you're about the only one that's dressed for the occasion, nice and warm. I, I just got in from chores, just breezed right in here and hit hit the button on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> so Reb doesn't have to do chores because he's got grass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got somebody here from uh, UK. Um nice. right there. From London, uh, horseman, wow. Horseman Hat Hatton. Whoa, UK. UK. Hi. Yeah. So welcome to the show. And then, of course, we had John uh, Smith here, and we have Jack, and we have some other folks, too, that haven't tapped no in vaccines. yet. No vaccines. I agree, Jack. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. Maybe uh, I'd love to hear Rev's uh, opinion about this, but I notice a lot of uh, uh, the homesteads that do the live shows and stuff, a lot of them will do them on a Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon or something it's like uh uh is do you find the six of course it's probably uh what six seven eight nine o'clock over there over yeah where you are, right? well well right now it's it's 8 30 here in alabama but it would be it would be 9 30 in uh north carolina yeah so uh yeah um do you find the time slot that we're doing right now is hard <laughs> or difficult oh uh yeah for me because i go to bed at like eight o'clock yeah most of the, most, most of the time when I'm not working nights, but, um, okay. but to your point, but to your point, like, uh, on Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon doing, uh, doing a podcast that wouldn't work either. Isn't that, isn't that the time where we're out in the yard sweating, you know, that's true. Yeah, that's I, what, I, don't, I really don't think that works either. Yeah. That's my rationality is like, why do homesteaders do that in the middle of the afternoon when we should be working in our yards? There you <laughs> <Yeah>. go. Because. <laughs> Because all the people who dream about being a homesteader 
or on YouTube at that time. Nailed it, Good Amy. <laughs> That's probably right. So uh, um, the, the, the horse Manhattan here says, says he's searching for USA holiday, which vacation area I was in. I don't know, is Gary, and, I don't and, know uh, if this is like the biggest um, vacation. And your channel appears to be so. Nice so. Place vacation. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're from the uh, UK, you would love it over here because it's beautiful. We call it sparkling sunshine days. Uh, can get cold, but our summers are beautiful here. And uh, very, Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's amazing. So uh, if you do any research to come to Oregon, look for what's called the Central Oregon region. Um, and the main hub out here would be considered Bend, Oregon. Um, we're not, we're outside of that, but it's a beautiful area and it would be a great place for a holiday. So come on over. And then by the way, uh, when you have time, we'll bring you over here to help us all pluck chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you are building an army. That's right. <laughs> we'll give you that Wait, country. This deal. is what this is what community is all about. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see here. I went to uh, oh, to a place called Fancy uh, Farm, Kentucky, last year for a friend's wedding, and it was fantastic. Not as good as Central Oregon, though. Um, his wife's family are hillbillies. <laughs> The only hillbillies we have around here is uh, John and Debbie. But, uh, <laughs> um, and they thought we were fantastic people. So uh, you will find our our homesteaders over here. We're quite the community of helping one another and all that stuff. We're right? down and to that's earth. Cool. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, but compared to Kentucky, yeah, I mean, that's good competition. Um, <laughs> John says, oh, I like hillbillies. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I like them too. Um, but yeah, you're always Should welcome here. Get in the Oregon on? area. My overalls. <laughs> Give us oh, a holler. There you go. <laughs> Actually, I think okay. we all came on with overalls the other day. <laughs> I, we did. Um, I was kind of wondering, John, uh, from small town tourists, is like, uh, you do realize uh, you need to go shopping for some overalls before you get up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I got? I got told last weekend that I deserve a second pair of overalls. Wow! Well, of course. Yeah, like that's what? Like, that's like having two two pairs of muck boots, right? Because I yeah. was we we've gone out to lunch with my very city uh, relative, and I was <laughs> telling her just what I you know a story that I think is normal, and she said, "Why don't you wash your coat?" <laughs> and I said, well, I need to wear it in the morning and in the evening, and it doesn't have time to dry. She said, why don't you buy another one? Like, just like that. Any slickers? God, God bless her. <laughs> That's fine. This life isn't for everybody. But but I forget sometimes that not everybody lives it's like us. It's easy to do. It's really <laughs> easy to do. Heck, I went to a restaurant the other day with my overalls on. You go everywhere with your overalls. <laughs> <laughs> Have yeah. you ever found yourself going into stores like you got a project going and you, you're working on a project in the yard or property? And then you go, Oh, I gotta go to Home Depot. And I get in the Home Depot and I look down and I notice I've got uh, dirt spots on my knees because I've been you know working on the ground. And I'm going, I didn't even need to look to see how terrible I look. And it's like um but yeah, I just I don't even think yeah. anything of you it. Just don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm notorious for getting to town and finding cow poop on myself somewhere. Like, y'all smell that? They're like, Mom, you got cow poop on you. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Of course, oh, no. okay. Read this one. <laughs> Your words are totally different than ours. <laughs> really? <laughs> Of course, we get, we can have the debate here. Who talks the real English, right? Um, right. We also say hello. Um, how do you do, uh, ma'am? And we say sir and ma'am, uh, madam. Um, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> or hey, you. Um, or hey, yeah. <laughs> they say, how y'all? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, we say that a lot here. So what's going on, y'all? Um, uh, we don't say, they say it a is, lot more on the East Coast. Yeah, that's a, a, you all is more of a southern thing. Um, uh, see, uh, it took me almost three here. years to get that out of my uh, oh my vocabulary. God. Look at that! <laughs> Look what he wrote here. 
All we have to do is drive a couple states up, and then you're just you start saying, "Hey, what's going on?" Hey, yeah. eh? uh, let's see. I told him we could uh, we could hear him fine, and he laughed. <laughs> yeah. Y'all, oh, I love it. Um, yeah, that's kind of funny. There's a lot of funny things that um, I don't want to say it's funny. It's different. I love the difference between the English here. <laughs> And uh, the UK. He um, first his wife out as a British garden tool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man, That's is, just wrong. Is, <laughs> garden tool. Ooh, a ho. <laughs> yeah, around here you can make a shot. You're going to be a tool. You're going to get punched. I know somebody is sleeping in the barn tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, some of those things you can get away with in this area, so yeah. Um, but yeah, cool. I'm gonna teach you some of your language, horseman. It'd be so much fun to have somebody from the UK that's uh, that come over here and just hear the different ways that they interpret the things we do every day. And mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't want to say our way is the best way because we're actually secondary in language compared to them. I mean, our English yeah. came from them. Dude, we're so. secondary language to the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh. Yeah, those guys on the East Coast, I tell you, there's two things I know about <laughs> East Coast people. They drive like maniacs. Um, uh, That's true. I spent would... four years over there. I know exactly what it's like. <laughs> yeah, it's like they could be the, the most docile church loving people and stuff but you put them in a car and, the, and they're, they're seduced by the devil <laughs> tell you <laughs> they get in the car and you can't keep up with them they're weaving in and out it's just so <laughs> and i and they get out of the car and they, here. And, they, and, they, <laughs> and they get out of the car and they're sweet again it's like how did you do that <laughs> so, that's the east coast thing yeah if you don't do that you don't survive that's what I understand. Yeah, yeah. It's it's Mad Max. It really is. That is the perfect description of, of drive. And I got to confess, I'm actually comparing it to K Connecticut drivers. Um, and because they're kind of right there by New York and all that. That was the most uh, insane drive I've ever done. So um, I'm used to D. I'm used to DC and Atlanta. You know, uh, it's 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 uh like it's almost like they hit you on purpose. You know what I mean? It's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, all my crew is starting to show up, you guys. Thank you so much. It was it was such a pleasure to be on the show with you guys tonight. Well, glad yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. You're but welcome here anytime. You, well, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try. Do you, you guys are every Thursday night, is that right? Every yeah. Thursday at nine o'clock hey. for you. And uh, well, thank you guys so much. Have a good rest of your night. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you now. Bye. The Rev Show. That was, that was cool to have him. That was a surprise. <laughs> that was awesome. Hey, um, it actually worked, Rob. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I was telling Reb before the show started, I go, you know, you're the first one to ever hit the button to come visit us. And because uh, we, you know, we've been watching other homestead come uh, groups doing, like I said, shows at weird times during the times that we got to do chores. Um, and, uh, and they're getting people popping on. And I go, well, we should try that. And so we've been putting a link up there, and he was the first one to take it. Um, and that was, uh, I hope all of them go like that. And, yeah. Uh, that and he raises Idaho pasture. And we care. learned something from him. Yeah. So, uh, of course, all my notes are totally out of sequence now because yeah. we had a guest. And that's now you fine. got a half hour. We can get through it. Yep. And a couple of things I didn't get to do at the beginning of the show is remind you guys that this is an audio. Uh, podcasts also so if you like podcasts on the audios um just whatever software you're using on your cell phone or whatever just type in ranger rob country living podcast and how come amy does not look like that picture she always puts up there when she's <laughs> <laughs> see now look at the comparison of that picture before that's because you don't have blonde hair anymore oh it was white hair actually it was kind of white is the, I also you can't tell in that picture I had a mohawk. I got do not have mohawk anymore. I That's think normal. It's beautiful. We used to, we uh by the way horsemen we uh we used to buy guns from Walmart and then then things kind of changed. Um, 
Is it normal well, to buy a gun from your Walmart store? You can. Do they still sell well, you guns? Used to. Oh yeah, they still sell they, guns. Yeah, they sell oh, guns. Okay. Yeah, some TV some guns. of our big stores are kind of gone. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. When, um, some of our woke uh, stores got a little woke, as they call it, and so, but not all. I mean, but yeah, a lot of our stores, I think, especially our ranch stores, you can get them. Our sportsman stores, all that stuff. But yeah, one. here bur burglars have more rights than we do. Yeah, here too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> Jack says Amy has upgraded her business attire. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Jack. <laughs> I said, what else did I forget to tell you guys? Oh, we're also syndicated on Central Oregon Radio. Plug, plug, plug. And um, so, yeah. Um, 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 um. I need to talk about one more time uh, before we really get going. Is this this Monday? I really like to have everybody's feedback. Especially if you're an Idaho pasture pig um, breeder and stuff. But this Monday, I got it's almost an hour video. So I'm really sorry about that. But there's so much data. It's all about starting and raising Idaho pasture pigs in our perspective, which means it will be different in the different regions that you're in. But after a year and a half, I'm going, you know, there's a lot of little things I can pass on that might make it easier for someone starting out. And we are encouraging people to raise their own pigs and so uh and we highly recommend the idaho pasture pig for many reasons so that video is, might seem long and I, I suggest if you uh bookmark it get yourself a cup of coffee make it an evening thing and go through that and it'll be a great discussion for your family especially if you're considering getting pigs in the future um so anyway that's kind of a special video i put together this week and uh, i'm kind of I'm looking forward to seeing the feedback from everybody on that video. So uh, I got to go through my homesteads here and see what's going on. I kind of know what's going on with uh, um, John and Debbie's. I went over to their homestead today, and uh, they've got way too many projects. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I saw a wall of bricks going up, I'm going, I better get home before he asks me to help. That's what Rev wrote. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Actually, it was cold. I went into their house today, and I'm you know, we're watching. I'm looking, at it, and they're showing me, and I'm sitting there like a little wimpy guy. I'm like, I'm freezing, and it's like, uh, so I didn't last very long. I felt really bad. Um, and, and I'm running around with that sweat jacket on, and that was it. Oh well, yeah, if I was moving around doing projects, I'd do a little better. But uh, uh, the horseman people, uh, uh, he's. Uh, I had a chance to check out some of our moonshine. Um, I got to tell you, when I was in Washington State, um, there was a place where it was actually a moonshine shop. And you get burgers and stuff in there. And you could get all kinds of samplers. And so we, we bought the sampler. So Sherry and I not only got a really good meal, but we got a hangover from it. <laughs> that was a really good dinner. Um, but, yeah, that was that was fun. I didn't realize they made so many flavors of moonshine. I um, love moonshine. I know. <laughs> so good. You know, uh, no, by the way, the newest thing, I got to tell you, there's a new booze out there I like. Uh, I don't get to drink that much, but when I do, uh, Shuri, some reason they wanted to make pina coladas, and we usually make our own. Well, you can buy, like, from Safeway you, uh, stuff. They have a pre-made uh, pina colada, and it's a little bit potent, though. <laughs> But it's so good. Like margaritas. Yeah, I mean, um, but it, uh, it it's actually straight from the bottle. Shake it up really good. It's super yummy, um, and it's, uh, it warms your tummy up a little good too. So if you want a pina colada, and you don't want to go through uh, making the ice and all that stuff, <laughs> go, go to the grocery store. Just go in there, and you'll find a big white bottle, and uh, it's super yummy. So yeah, that's my latest boozing ende endeavor. Uh, but I'm gonna go to Amy because we uh I've got a lot of harassment for uh, John and Gabby. Oh, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Let me turn off the heater. The okay. heater was too loud. And she's that was gone. really good timing, you know. I was like, I, I got questions for Amy. Off she goes. <laughs> so uh what's going on with this? Uh I, I always I always want to say furling, but that's not the right word. 
You have something going on with your horses or, or with their hooves. Um, what's going on? Farrier. Farrier. It's called the farrier. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The farrier came today and they all got done. I did not have a panic attack. I was very close, but I did not. <laughs> so, yeah. By the way, Jack's little comment there, there's a joke behind that. That, uh, and that's actually one of my shout outs, which I haven't done yet, um, is Terrabon Coffee Wagon is last year we uh, they made a, a, a Ranger Rob Pina Colada um, smoothie out of there. So we did that for our summer. Anyway, so that's what Jack's re referring to here when I was talking about Pina Coladas. I for totally forgot about that. And when, when he came up here to visit us, he stopped at the coffee wagon and intentionally ordered a Ranger Rob Pita Colada. So I was like, thank you so much. That was so nice. Oh, we got a new person, Schedule One uh, Construction LLC. Just a quick question. How do you make a living on a homestead? Well, that's the million-dollar question right there. <laughs> We're still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I I like the question, though. So, yeah, good question. Um, I, I, in fact, I really like that question. So... The first thing to make money, I would say, on a homestead is don't count on anything that you do on the homestead to make you money. <laughs> Start just, out selling eggs. Yeah. <laughs> you'll never make money in on that, but it's satisfying. Um, so you'll notice most of the homesteads diversify into their YouTube channels. They'll go into uh, teaching courses or, t or doing training or doing uh, some modern kinds of things in there. And there's some pretty good money to be made in that, even podcasting. Um, so they'll supplement themselves and surround themselves with technology um, that really can make money that uh, uh, doesn't have as much liability to it, you might say, or as um, uh, like doing a podcast. Once you have your software and stuff, uh, it's not like having to buy feed all the time and having to buy, get a, a, a vet or get some, a farrier. Um, so uh, you'll notice that the ones that really do look like they're making a halfway decent income, I would have to say it's because they're doing, making money off of other things other than the basics of what the homestead is producing, like, you know, like cows and calves and pigs, etc. cetera. Um, those will help cover your cost on your homestead and right uh, until you get your numbers up like uh sherry sherry and i were in you know starting to say okay we're making money to cover the cost for our pigs when we sell the piglets we make money uh when we do the sharing uh programs with people um but what if i could sell individual cuts of pork legally uh and you'll see that we're launching this year a online store with USDA cut um, pork and uh, also poultry, and, and, and we're going to get in there because the mark, the mark, the markup um, is sustainable to possibly make money, uh, make a profit. I will say so. I wanted to just add that to his question. I think that's a great question, and uh, <laughs> the horseman. That, that would take a whole show. What's that? That would probably take a whole sh a whole show to actually break it down. Yeah, but, but for there's a, quick... a reason why hobby is in front of our <laughs> homestead. Yeah, it's because th th there ain't no way. <laughs> but yeah. you know, we, we do what we can for the community is what what our main plan is. So you do, you do. Yeah, um, and that's kind of how I look at it, is like I look at the homesteading as getting closer to the, um, well, being closer to my food to closer to my community. And, uh, um, but I find that because I've done what I'm doing now, podcasting on stuff much longer than just doing homesteading, it was easy for me to blend some of that in. Um, and that's so easy for other folks. Some folks are comfortable in front of a camera or doing a podcast or talking to strangers or getting ridiculed or having trolls, it's going to happen. Um, and so, uh, yeah, but that's why you see Homesteady and you see uh, Melissa Norris doing what she does and the uh, Homestead Farm, they're doing, uh, they have video uh, membership classes about, you know, canning and things like that. And, uh, and they're making good money off that stuff. And that's oh, yeah. why, you, or some of them are writing books. 
Um, so yeah, you'll notice it's about everything that isn't being produced on the homestead as it is <laughs> showing people <laughs> like all kinds of comments coming in here. Um, uh, oh, I knew I was wondering if he'd get the guts to do it. He did it. Yes, sir. Bob, there he is. Hi, <laughs> Mr. Well, Town. <laughs> how are you guys doing? Pretty good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. So this is John yeah. Smith from a Small Town <sighs> Tourism. Oh, that's who Canada. you are. <laughs> we, we need to turn him into a homesteader this summer. Yeah. Well, yes. I, I We uh, we got a new house. Well, we're going to be moving in February down to Maricopa. Wow. So, yeah. So we're going to have to wait until at least then. So we're thinking about chickens. I don't know. We're, you know, who knows? Yeah, we, so, we just started that venture. <laughs> so, where so, are you but, from? Mesa, Arizona. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was we just moved up from Sierra Vista, Arizona. Oh, right on. Down by Tucson. Yeah. Yep. Um, so uh Patty Hall, uh, welcome to the show. Um oh she's uh Patty, are you from Central Oregon? Just checking. Yeah. Uh so I'll tell you, you're our next door. When you say Maricopa. That's a big place to be saying I did, I moved to Maricopa. Well, so, not Maricopa County, the city of Maricopa. Oh, there's actually a city. Yeah, yeah which is actually in Pinal County. Ah, not to confuse really? anybody. Yeah, I just <laughs> want to oh, no, I know where you're at. So, <laughs> so people that live in Maricopa as opposed to Maricopa County, have they figured out how to vote properly yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh my goodness. gosh, Rob. <laughs> we know how to vote. They just don't know how to count the votes. Are the count it, that's right. They, they do. Yeah, so, well, they, uh, uh, they have uh, two quick. hands. <laughs> yeah. One for me, two for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And we'll make this a half vote. Um, let's see. So, Patty, by the way, where in Central Oregon you, uh, area are you from? Love that. Love the always love meeting somebody else in Central Oregon. Um, and do you have a homestead? Uh, and in Schedule One contractor, he says, Well, thanks for that answer, guys. <laughs> I don't know if it was a good answer, but I show up, it kind of scratched the surface a little bit. We'll talk about that more. That's a good subject. Um, so Maricopa is located. So if you jump on Interstate 10, gotcha. okay, and you start heading south. And then once you get right outside of, uh, I guess it would be uh, Chandler, you make yeah. a right on Route 347. Yeah. And Route 347 right is the one. The casino, right? Yeah, right by the casino. Yep. And you head kind of, I guess, southwest, uh, and yeah. that'll take you right into Maricopa. So if yeah. you've ever gone to like Gila Bend, yeah. you, you would probably have gone through Maricopa to get to okay, Gila Bend. I know where you're yeah. at now. That's a neat area to be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Did you buy a new house down there, or, or? we're renting it, to, it it first, just to Does make it have, sure it's it's the right place. Does yeah, it have and a little it, elbow room for you. Oh yeah, plenty. Yep, we got a lot of room, and uh, the market is so volatile. We don't want to jump in to buy something when a year from now it might be worth fifty percent of what you pay for it. So we're just gonna we're gonna wait and and see. So Patty, uh, Patty, Patty, I need to talk to you. I got a you. question for her. <laughs> Me too. Patty, did I buy a pepperoni stick from you at the Deschutes uh, Lavender Farm? Were you at the Deschutes Lavender Farm? I think you're Patty that I bought a pepperoni stick from. <laughs> <laughs> I also and grow year round with the help so of. She of raises grass fed beef. Yeah. Um, I'm working with somebody else, but I haven't cinched down anything yet that I'm buying uh, beef from. Life. And I'd like to know your volume because I may actually buy one of your, I'll buy one of your grass-fed beefs if it's, you know, obviously good. And then I'll, t I'll send it over to USDA. But yep. we're going online, Patty, with uh, centraloregongrown.com, and that'll be online selling our pork and beef from local folks around here but i'm always always want to make sure you never have everything in the same basket so i'd love to have another source of buying beef so uh, i'd love to talk to you more and we got co uh corn fed life here today oregonian mm. yeah. from oregonian oregonian 
Mm-hmm. Former, he's a former Oregonian. Mm-hmm. Mm. Is that is that proper Oregonian? Is that how you say that? Uh, uh, all it, of us over here. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're Oregonians. Oregonian. Oregonian. Gosh, I nice. can't say it. Oregonian. No, Oregonian. <laughs> mm. <laughs> now, if you're over here in Central Oregon, the, the next word after that is not related to Portland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. Roy, everybody, everybody says not like port, not like that Portland. <laughs> not That's anymore, what, anyways. Yeah, you got to finish the sentence with that part. Um, and uh, actually, Arizona's the same way. So what was his name again? John Smith. Chris. What? Are you, uh, oh, never mind. So uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. What was your name again? Are you talking to me? Yes. Yeah, John. John, I was right. John, it's only, it's only been on the well, show. Are like you raising three times. any animals as of today? No, but I grew up on a homestead in oh, uh, okay. Pennsylvania, and so I'm very familiar with raising chickens. And we had we had huge heifers. We had like giant sows, not heifers, sows, pigs, pigs? and uh, a lot of rabbits. You know, you have ten rabbits. Next day, you have a hundred rabbits. It's just that way. <laughs> And uh, that. yeah, she's, she's trying to do that right now. <laughs> Those things breed like rabbits, yeah. and so I, I've had rabbits before, but mine were Angora show rabbits. Ah, oh. now I'm doing the meat rabbits. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we just we just pawn off all of our animals all on each other, and pretty soon we have we go from uh, homesteads to farms really quick around here. <laughs> so I gotta, I'll tell you, when I was a kid, I had to uh, get the eggs in the morning. That was my job, you know, it was freezing cold out. So I would bundle up in a big jacket, a big coat and everything. I'd go out and collect all the eggs and I would put them in my pocket to bring them back. Well, I had to scrape uh, this root. I had to, I forget what it was, but I, I was fixing something and I was scraping something. And so I jumped down off a bale of hay with a pockets full of eggs. They all... <laughs> Every one of them just blasted apart in my pocket. And then that, of course, I'm running late for the bus. So I was like probably the only third grader that day that had eggs pouring out of the pockets of my coat. So, oh, well, John, if this makes yeah. you feel better, I did yeah. that the other day and I'm an adult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, awesome. Has anybody in this panel not put eggs in your pocket and broke them? <laughs> I haven't. That's because you don't go get the That's eggs. That's because you never go get the eggs. Yeah, you always send her out at freezing temperatures. <laughs> yeah. So, now you so break so an egg, you're like breaking like three bucks. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you better be careful. With it. So, John, uh, what, what do you expect them to learn when you get up here? <laughs> oh, from you? A lot. Well, from us. Yeah. I'm like obsessed with the hydroponics, and I definitely uh, – so I want to do that. I'm going to make a video while I'm up there. I would like to make a video of you – whatever you do during the day. I mean, we all know what you do during the day because you record every day that you do stuff. <laughs> but so, but I want to make a video of that and I want to really get into hydroponics. It'll be June when I'm up there. So that should yeah. be in full swing, I think. Yeah, and well, I'm, we'll, everything will be just kind of starting. It won't be real tall, but um, yeah. it's a great cool. way to show people how easy it is to do it in your living room. So you yeah. do know that we are all a half a mile apart from each other. All yes. So I'm thinking, I don't know, potluck at, at Rob's? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> if it's if it's related to food, we're all in. <laughs> Perfect. It, and it's all got to be farm fresh potluck stuff. Not, oh, yeah. Nothing from Walmart. I'll bring the rabbit. I, I'll yes. I, I've got, we've got so many eggs, it's not even funny. Just about the time I get low on eggs, and then it stops for a couple of days, and I'm up to like, 30 40 oh, eggs again and i'm going wow and these guys are on the news going okay oh, good eggs and 1495 for 18 of them and it's like uh yeah it's like are you kidding we're like swamped with eggs <laughs> <laughs> well they've recalled them all in the store oh, yeah i know it just doesn't seem right because it's like eggs here are just like you know a water spigot <laughs> it's like turn on the water spigot it's a blah 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 blah, blah lots of eggs yeah, that's what we did when I was a kid. We traded eggs for sweet corn. We would trade like a, a dozen or so eggs, and and our neighbor would give us a grocery bag, the old paper bags, full of uh, you know sweet corn. Here's a sweet corn. Normal size bags. They cut them yeah. in half now. Yeah, remember, and they all break. Remember where you could buy like twelve ears of corn for a buck? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I miss those days. You remember when the grocery bags were paper and so yeah. they would stay wherever you put them, they would stay. Now the plastic ones are wrapped up in trees and cactuses and fences and everything else. You can find a plastic bag anywhere. It could be a hundred miles away from the closest store. You'll find a plastic bag wrapped yeah. up in a fence somewhere. Yeah. Is there you how can't we're start a fire with one. No. <laughs> that's right. Isn't it kind of funny how we're going back to what we used to do? Because that's all we used to have was paper bags. And now yeah. Yeah. here in Oregon, they're really clamping down on the plastic bags, which is probably good as long as they substitute it with something. We have other stores like Walmart just saying, oh, put it in your pocket. You, we're not going to give you a bag. Yeah. <laughs> Unless but, it's uh, eggs. Unless yeah. It's, <laughs> That's so true. I can't wait till we get John up here. It'd be a lot of fun. I think it would be great. He'll have some great places. We got to send him the sisters for his show. Uh, sisters, Oregon's beautiful little town. And, oh, nice. Uh, it's a really good stories out of that place. It's cute, yeah. Uh, but we have a lot of cute little towns that we can send you to that have really good history. And, Perfect. Uh, uh, Prineville would actually have a lot of stories about logging and stuff like that in the day oh and, uh, yeah but that's a long ways out yeah but yeah so Sumter, uh, that's definitely a good town. Yeah, yeah it was a lot of places so um just when i i've worked him to death in the homestead he can make, you know use the excuse i gotta go to sisters for my video <laughs> so it's like what do you mean you don't want to clean the hog pens anymore <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna do that to you yeah when annie gets oh, loose uh, you'll you'll send me out to get Annie when she gets loose, right? Yeah, <laughs> <A little stinker. laughs> or, yeah. He can't never keep nope. that that girl in there. <laughs> I was sitting in there, in there with Sparky. Go uh, go uh, go put some hay in Sparky's house. <laughs> if you live, <laughs> we'll talk about it some more. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah. Hey. By the time you get up here, you'll have uh, piglets to play with. Sweet. Yeah, so so much fun and very. I mean, you could sit there and put a camera on a piglet for an hour and never get bored. They're so mm. cute. Um, they're just adorable. I, I just there's no other word for them, <laughs> for piglets. And then they then they have to grow up and kind of. So uh, when they're you so get up cute. here, we're gonna get you. Uh, uh, we, uh, hopefully, you'll be uh, milking cows again someday. There, Amy, is that true? Um, not by the time John gets here, uh, unless I got a new one. Cow gestation is 287 days. So, oh, oh wow! Oh. I was really looking forward to teaching John. He just made John milk. cry. I, I know it. But um, my my little heifer that we didn't know how old she was or if she'd ever come in heat. She just she's got her first heat cycle now, and she's oh. a little terror beast. She was trying to fight the neighbor through the fence, and. Uh, <laughs> So, so now it now comes the decision do we breed both cows i don't know mm. so well you know you got a milk customer here i know it i know <laughs> so, but, but it was good news that she is having a heat cycle so that's good news so good okay. yeah i think the one thing I'm, I'm kind of bitter with amy about is i i was actually getting off of milk I was like thinking, ah, I'm getting the, up the age. I probably got to watch, watch the lactose and all that stuff. I might feel a little better in the gut and all that stuff. So we really, really, really tapered down our milk to like just a little bit to have around for cooking and all that. And then she, uh, we run in and we met her last year and she goes, oh, I raised raw milk. I'm going, I don't think I've really had raw milk before. So somehow we connected and I actually got my first jar of raw milk from her and it was the best so good <laughs> and then she cut him off like that yeah i know i he felt like awful. a junkie <laughs> is that the kind of milk that just clings to the side of the glass you're drinking oh it out yeah of? Oh, yeah it's, it's yeah. like it's cream on the top and you it tastes pick it up. so much better in the store <laughs> oh yeah. so good. i'm not a milk drinker so i think it's funny she cut him off boom cut. <laughs> wow. then she takes it away and we can't get anymore. So now I've got to buy gallons of this whole milk that doesn't taste as good as hers. It doesn't taste the same. So why are you still drinking it? Because I don't want to lose that wonderful flavor of whole milk. <laughs> I got to have my glass of milk at night. So. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Oreo cookies. 
anything else? Well, guys, if I'm running a little late, I don't care right now because we, we get our favorite person, John Smith, here. Oh, well, that's nice. And I haven't had a chance to really even find out some of the big things going on in these guys' uh, 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 homesteads. Uh, Schedule 1, by the way, says, uh, is it expensive to raise a cow? So that's a good question. You got a quick comment on that one now? Yes. With feed prices, if you do not have grass to feed them, if you don't have a pasture, you have to buy hay, especially a milk cow, with the price of grain, it is expensive. Mm. And so that's really where our debate on how many cows to keep comes in. So right. yes, expensive. Is it worth it? If you're depends on if you're yeah, selling yeah. the milk or not. Yeah, I mean uh, now. I mean, when your when uh, meatloaf was doing the milking and stuff, and you were selling stuff on a regular basis, um, did you uh, feel like you're getting some income back on her that was significant? I wouldn't call it income. I would call it a lot closer to breaking even on the cows. Um, so, just like you were saying about, you know, it, it's more about offsetting your cost on a on a homestead regarding mm -hmm. what you sell so it, it helps to offset the cost however if i had two cows in milk could i even possibly sell that much milk because whether you're selling yes. milk five no, days a week three you. days a week or seven days a week <laughs> two cows is eating a ton of grain seven days a week wow there's more people in the world than you <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me you're gonna drink eight gallons a day you're a liar <laughs> thank you, Abe. Day. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, okay, well, uh, also check on Amy. So, we talked about her cows. So, um, you're kind of pulling a rob on us here a little bit. You're pushing rabbits on people like we we're pushing Idaho pasture pigs. So, you guys all have Idaho pasture pigs, and now everybody seems to have rabbits because of you. Yes. They're just so, that cute. Uh, was, I can't yeah. even get my foot in that by myself. She did, actually. I got coffee first. <laughs> like, That's the name of my buck, is coffee. Coffee. Mm. So I, so I have to have a latte to go with coffee to make babies. <laughs> <laughs> and another big question that's out there is on a homestead, and I've never understood it, and I still don't understand it, is I, you got these adorable goats what the heck do you do with a goat? Milk. We scratch your faces. <laughs> <laughs> they seem so like an animal. They kind of rank up there with a horse if you're not riding your horse and using your horse. No. To me, goats, goats no, to me they are don't the rank way. with a horse. <laughs> well, first of all, billy goats, okay, because I got experience with goats. Billy goats are nasty. There's no purpose to have a billy goat unless you plan on making more goats, right? <laughs> Because that little thing on their chin, you know what that's for, right? The little beard on their chin? It's a tickler, right? <laughs> they pee on it, and then they shake it on things, and that's how they share their, yeah. Okay, so I've heard that, but how in the hell do they reach clear up there to pee on it? They'll stand on a, a tree against a tree, and they'll, like, pee up, up into their they, beard. They can just reach around. You come over, uh -oh. and I'll show you. I have a buck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's how they pick up the ladies. Okay. Yeah. So that's 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 goat world. That's kind of insane. But then the I also have uh, experience drinking goat milk. Didn't know it when I was a kid. We were drinking goat milk and I always wondered why my aunt ran the milk through a strainer when she would put the milk on our on our uh, cereal and stuff. And then I realized it was to catch the hair. Because it was right out of the goat. I mean, it was like, Hello. yeah. That's yeah. I don't know well, as it is, but that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, growing up on a farm, right? It is what I it is. I am not doing that for you. No goats. <laughs> I don't like goats. <laughs> so with these adorable little goats you got, what is the ultimate goal with the little goats? To milk them, just like milking the cow. To milk Those them, things are to so tiny, them. you have to use like fingers. Are you going to make soap? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> Rob. I have a milk machine and it comes with smaller cups. You know, a, a cow's teat is this big. The goat's is this big. Mm. Are you going to make soap milk and stuff with it? What? Are you going to make soap? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Goat milk soap. 
right. Okay, yeah, well, she answered the yeah, question. Yeah, everybody does it over here. Soap um, and lotion and what else, Aim? Uh, candles. Goat milk mm -hmm. candles. Goat cheese. Yeah, yeah. that's good stuff. Um, <laughs> now, I don't want to put John in the spot, but, you know, your greenhouse needs repairs, <laughs> Amy. Yeah, and I does. know somebody's got a greenhouse that looks just like yours. Yeah, let's we, went over, right. we went over there already. We're ahead of you, Rob. <laughs> I I haven't heard like a, a business plan yet going on how to repair your. So we have a big windstorm, John here, and uh, uh, her little greenhouse got pretty beat up. Mm. You know, and mine but, survived. Yeah, it's fine. So you would exactly think the God least thing you could do. But, since you this can't time. give them any milk anymore, at least you can do is come over and work for you and get the greenhouse fixed, right? No. Yeah. So we need <laughs> you want me to fix it? We can, we can come over there and fix it, Abe. I know, and, and you offered, too. Well, but we don't um, want to step on Dustin's toes, either. Oh, he's never here. <laughs> <laughs> he's always at he's work. Got, got he's a got a real job. job. Remember, he's getting Saturdays off now. I know, he's got quite the list to catch up on before he gets to the greenhouse on the list that oh so that's why we need to come over and do it no um Barry's working my mother-in-law's working on a new design for a greenhouse so i'm not sure which direction we're going with that mm. ah. he he told me that he's just gonna tear that one down and build a new one yeah and that's wow. probably so okay so mr john smith what now that you got this new place and you're in Arizona. Are you mm -hmm. going to give it a little hand into doing a little bit about gardening? Yeah, we want to. That's why I want to check out your um, hydroponic system. I want to get to. I want to kind of pick your brain on how to go about that because we want to use hydroponics uh, to grow our stuff because we have limited backyard space, but we got enough to to do a kind of an elaborate hydroponic setup. And so that's what we we want to dabble with, kind of the easier. Arizona friendly type stuff like the tomatoes and the peppers yeah. and that type of stuff. Yeah. So uh, oh, if you do go on our win. channel, by the way, and go back about three years and I, we, uh, we did document a lot of our gardening in Arizona. And uh, so it was, I really thought Arizona was really cool because you have two seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the winter season or fall season, and then you get the spring season and then, you can grow stuff in the hot season, but it's got to be just the right stuff that can handle the right that heat. But yeah. uh, I, it took me kind of a you know the first year to kind of figure out how that climate worked there, but it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing climate. It and, is, and an interesting thing about the house that we picked up, the backyard faces east, and this is the first home we've had here that will face east. So we'll get more of the morning sun, yeah. but we won't get that scalding you know, yeah. killer afternoon sun. So I, I agree, but I, uh, yeah, yeah, I grew all kinds of stuff up, but I used above ground gardening and I, I didn't do high hydroponics at all down there. And I'd be really interested, but the big rule is if you're going to do hydroponics outside there, mm -hmm. make sure any of the pipes you're using are white, that are reflective. Oh yeah. Um, don't get black pipe. Like I got, I'm using that, ASB or whatever they call it, pipe, and uh, that was my mistake I made here. In the summertime, my my NFTs get way too hot. From the Interesting. Sun. So make sure you have a reflective pipe, and you you'll you'll do fine. But that's the biggest thing I would say with Arizona is watch, watch what color of pipe you use. Yeah, that would make sense. I you could probably wrap it, and you could probably insulate it too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, or paint it. But I mm -hmm. have so much spare time in my hands. By the way, what's behind you? <laughs> what is that? What is Route that? Route 66 uh, sign. Yeah. Notice yeah. next to the Route 66 sign would be the Ranger Rob pet poopy bags. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. Exactly right. And then I got my. What was it's... that? What yeah. Friend. Oh, absolutely. I got paid in poopy bags. That's how I got paid. <laughs> And, and uh, I got my chicken that hat. And he still doesn't give a shit. I mean, uh, give a poop. That's right. Well, you know, out here, okay, people walk their dogs everywhere, but not everybody carries a Ranger Rob pet booby bag. They let their dog just take a big 
you know, steaming dump right on the sidewalk. Yeah. And so if I'm out and about, I take one with me, I keep it in my pocket, and I clean up after the uh, the pigs that live in the neighborhood. That's but his, uh, that's his form of composting. Yeah, exactly. And then I have my stream yard pillow. I was on, uh, a st I was watching the, str yeah, see it right back there. Where'd you yeah. get that? I was watching a StreamYard show and you had to like uh, put like, I don't know, it was uh, some hashtag and then they did a drawing and I won. So there you go. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Win anything. yeah. So I won my StreamYard pillow. I got a StreamYard sweatshirt. It's pretty nice. They set, they hooked me up. And then uh, the other side, it's always weird to move here, but <laughs> my, uh, my Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, yeah. Logo. Right. It's all about the 49ers. Hmm. Like, it's like, uh -huh. <laughs> you, you keep saying that when when Super Bowl comes. Hey, s we got what seven or six? I don't know. We got the most. <laughs> <laughs> Not after this weekend. <laughs> We're gonna kick those Cowboys' butts. Yeah, that's gonna be a good game. Yeah. That's gonna be yeah. That'll be a good game for sure. I can't go too much longer here because we all have chores and stuff. But uh, yeah, I want to make sure, you know, uh, uh, some of us are done. <laughs> uh, well, Amy's probably you know she's out there with a Coleman lantern at nine o'clock at night <laughs> wearing three jackets, out there <laughs> milking cows and stuff. So I always feel yeah. her kids and taking them out there in the cold. Yeah, but I got to touch a little bit on some of John and Debbie here in the top corner here. They uh. I went to their place and it looks like a construction zone. I'm telling you, for two old okay. people, and I mean really, old, really old, old people, they're building stuff left and right on their property. It's like brick columns in one area, new coops and in, in, in frames in the other area. Got all this crazy stuff going on, and uh, and it's like, I it's going to be like summertime before you get all those projects done. I need and, uh, summertime just to start on them. <laughs> I know. It's like, and it's You're like I want to know summer. who is responsible for all these projects. Hmm. Uh, Debbie tells me, John, wouldn't it be nice to have this? And, I, and then I say, okay, well, I'll uh, get this, 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 this. This is a homestead, <laughs> a joint effort. <laughs> That's a pretty simple question to that, to that, uh, right? That's a simple answer to that question. If you ever let a potato grow, you can see the big, long white eyes. So I would think that would be the first thing that you would see coming up out of the ground is what would look like a big, long white potato eye growing out. Actually, on ours, though, we had like little bushes showing up and actually it didn't look anything like a potato. You can do that. And, and, uh, we did, Russets, we did Yukon, and we did Pontiacs, and they're like giant. Bush. I mean, they they were like three, four, five feet high, just giant bushes, and then about midsummer, all that stuff, they start looking kind of bad, and then pretty mm. soon, towards the end of the summer, they're all dead. That's and when you're supposed to do it. That's when, when you, the leaves. And that's when you go and say. Yeah. Move aside, because there the was fall. tons of potatoes there. <laughs> We've got so many potatoes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, we killed it on potatoes this year. It was a good year for us. But I Yeah, this guy was – Arizona. he was just asking at the ground level, what would, what should he be looking for when when they come through the ground? And wouldn't it be that little white eye-looking – No, it would no, be a green plant. Down. That's the bottom. Yeah. Oh, that's the root. Yeah, they just look like a little bush coming out of the ground. Um, ah. And it's and green grew up forever, and, bushy. and then in the, the end of fall, when all the greenery goes away and it looks like crap, <laughs> that's when you dig them up. Yep. Mm. But Perfect. Yeah, they're, they're pretty. I mean, for a hedge, it would have looked beautiful. But, uh, uh, but yeah, there was nothing really special about it other than kind of a hedge starts coming out of the ground. But uh, but no little you know what they call it tubers. The eyes. Mm -hmm. or anything, you know, I, That's you know, we didn't see any tubers. Um, mm. But yeah, <laughs> but it's a good question. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you guys also about well, of course, 
uh, I go over to their place today, freezing to death. And this is like, you, you think they build a fire or something to keep their company. It was warm, not in the but, house. And, and, and so I, I, I go over and say, you always see my rabbits? And I see this potential for uh, hamsters. I'm just waiting to see, you know, or little little pet mice. It's going to happen. I'm going to go over there in a couple of months and go, well, we used to have three. Now we have 27. And I'm, so she is totally set up for the hamster phenomenon. So, uh, <laughs> and I think that's thanks to Amy. Um, and so how are they Amy. doing? Are the girls still good? Oh, they're, they're such a joy. Yeah. They good. jump around and I open the door and they're right there in my face. And <laughs> yeah, they're, they're they, are ador- they are adorable. Let's say that for sure. But don't talk me into it. Just stay away. <laughs> look what look what he says. He says that the wife cooked all the potatoes before they planted them. <laughs> <laughs> you can be okay. like me. We have so Listen, many potatoes. That you can't you sleep. can't plant French fries. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And why not? <laughs> they come out like string potatoes. <laughs> Unless you plant the curly ones. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so it's a curly line. Um, yeah, I like this. I'm not sure which Johnny's referring to, but we're piling up, uh, piling up a lot of jobs uh, for John. Uh, he's talking now. about me. Yeah, that <laughs> that that one. Yeah, so John, not only yeah. <laughs> so not only they get these new rabbits, which are going to be hamsters pretty soon. They got this new coop they're putting together that they got from China. No, we did not. No, we got that one from Troutdale, Oregon. <laughs> okay. No, my shed's still in China. <laughs> it's at Custom for three years now in Wuhan. <laughs> and 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 at the same time, they spent like three grand on this a garage that can be adapted to be make a barn out of, and wow. that's where they want to put all these bricks. It's a car part. And uh, yeah, it's a car part. And. Uh, I'm like looking at the, I'm going, I am never coming over because they will never offer me coffee unless I'm going to help with the bricks. <laughs> so, you got to earn coffee. I know, but they'll earn it when they come over here. What, you, what was in your hand when you came over? Did you What's bring me that? coffee? No. I give you lots of coffee. It's not like coffee grows on trees, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Um, I did not also, that. I know it was bad. I did, I I'm full of bad jokes. I, I, <laughs> no, that was good. Up with John, no, I can't I believe did I didn't something. catch it. I noticed had this big pile of wood. Oh, and I'm looking at it. And I'm going, there is something truly wrong with that pile of wood he's got uh, that he got from Home Depot. And I'm looking, it's like, what is wrong with that? Turns out he's using <laughs> two by threes and not two by fours. Oh. I'm getting ready to do a big project. And I'm kind of like, why'd you buy two by threes? And he says, it's like a dollar cheaper than a two by fours, eight footers. And I'm going, you know, I think I could actually build my next feral house with three by threes and save a little money. Yeah. So, uh, mm. yeah, that was. And if uh, they're just as strong as two by fours. I know. I mean, I just, <laughs> I'm going, I think I could pull that off. Um, so I might take you up on that. So send myself a little money because I got to build a new feral house because uh, obviously I've got. <laughs> two pregnant sows now. <laughs> Whoops. Like hamsters. <laughs> I said, well, she got over there. You had a, the coop kit that apparently isn't from China. Um, so, yeah, you got lots of projects over there. So, yeah. So, yeah. Let, let, me, let me say about the bricks. Yeah. So this makes so, Rob jealous every time. Okay. Let's so hear I what you found these bricks online at our local gravel company they're selling them 50 50 dollars a pallet you buy one you get one free wow guess what i came home with eight <laughs> pallets <laughs> they're truck <laughs> john and my brother was ready to kill me <laughs> but that's what we're making the barn out of yeah well you go over to the house and look at their truck in a truck it's got his tongue hanging out, going, <laughs> carrying all those bricks. It's like, oh my gosh, the mud flaps on him. <laughs> There's no bottom to it anymore. You were so hard on that poor little truck. 
So uh, Horace Manhattan, he wants to know if you uh, where to get potato seeds. And I think you can buy them at the hardware store next to the canooter valves, the blinker fluid, and the, uh, yeah. I, I don't know, <laughs> Actually, the muffler yeah, bearings. Nice. You're dead you on. Go that's your your bag, buy a bag of potatoes and put them in your dark closet and they'll be ready to plant. Yeah, just uh, yeah, just buy some from the grocery store. Make sure they're not treated though, so get the organic. So, <laughs> so here, uh, don't buy the to uh, potatoes that oh, are regular. Get the ones that are organic, because they normally those aren't sprayed, because um, mm. they actually spray potatoes to not um, go to seed. So there's some words of wisdom. Make sure that they're organic because they haven't been treated. Because I've done that before. Well, I did works. mine last year, and I, that's all I did is went to the store, bought two different kinds of potatoes, and planted them. Yep. And we got potatoes. And we got potatoes. Yeah, they'll still, uh, but they're kind of, um, they try to spray them to keep them to last longer in the stores. Mm. Uh, doing that, so, um, But they'll still go to seed no matter what. But I bought my uh, some of my potatoes from a hardware store <laughs> in, in town. So right? like, yeah. That was not bad advice at all. I was like, yeah, they're right next to the, the motor oil. <laughs> That's right. The canooter valves, the muffler no, bearings. The blinker fluid. And the blinker fluid. That's right. So, um, and I've never bought to, dirt <laughs> to us. There's no, I, there is no, I, you can't get potato seeds. Uh, yeah, it's literally no, a there's potato. No potato seed. Yeah. No. So, mm. um, Horseman says, thank you very much. Um, not bad. I, 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 some of us folks over here can actually help out the UK folks. It's always nice to hear that we're productive in that way. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. But anyway, I should wrap this up because I know that everybody's yeah, got you're like a half hour. Over. I got to run. <laughs> well, I can see, I can take this video and I can uh, split it and turn it into a two, two day show. So part one, part two. So there you go. Um, yeah, it's a well, I look forward to meeting everybody in June. I'm excited about that. Oh, so. yeah, we are too. Um, yeah. I think uh, I'm actually, I, I hope you do videos on your gardening in Arizona because there's an art to it, but it's amazing. There's nothing better than making a video of your backyard in December showing beautiful cucumbers. And it's <laughs> enough everybody in the Northwest because they're right. all in the snow. And so I love um, the fact that I was able to grow some amazing things in the off time that most people have to go with the seasons. And so you can do amazing things in Arizona. So I, I can't wait to see what you do. Yeah, um, but, maybe I will. Maybe I'll start a channel and kind of document it from the beginning. Oh, so yeah. fun. There you yeah, go. Now, yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of good channels down there about Arizona gardening. But, uh, you know, anything at, like sunshine, like your cucumbers, your your melons, all that stuff. Arizona loves it until summer comes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah when it uh, hits that 114, you might as well hang it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I imagine. Uh, uh, peppers do good down there, too, by the way. Yeah, you can grow the, the chili peppers and the uh, jalapenos and everything. So Yeah, so I'm, I'm envious. I'll have to come down there and see your garden now. Yeah. But we gotta get them up here and freeze to death and put them to work. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I, I heard he was kind of a country boy when he grew up, but he's really a city slicker now. So. Yeah, I'm an urban redneck. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, in fact, if you ever watch one of his videos, he's like hiking a back road trying to find a graveyard or something, and he's like going down a hundred degree uh, out. And he's walking these dirt roads in the back hills. And it's like he's kind of sweating. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think he's going to have a heart attack. I'm, I'm film. Yeah, what I didn't show on film was me out in the middle of the desert, calling my friend, going, "Where the hell am I? How do I get out of here?" <laughs> and then I'm thinking, I wonder if he's going to run into a rattlesnake. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I, I, I would hang it up right there, going, "I'm done." <laughs> I wish I knew my way out of here. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think yeah. I've seen a couple of his videos. I think I have too. Did <laughs> oh, you yeah. do ghost towns too? Yeah, you did. Yeah. What was the I one that you were doing in the back there. road yep. and you're trying to find that? Well, one it's nice grave. meeting you. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Yeah, I did that. I was looking for the gravesite uh, for all of Oatman. Yeah. Uh, well, not 
Oatman. Yeah, well, not all of Oatman, I shouldn't say, but the Oatman family, Roy's Oatman, her dad and her, uh, um, one of her brothers and her, uh, her mother got killed by Indians, like the local uh, Indians mm-hmm. out there on the way to the, the quote unquote promised land. They were part of uh, a uh, kind of an offshoot of the Mormon belief mm-hmm. and they left uh, Illinois to go to California, the promised land. And uh, when they were crossing through Gila Bend in that area, Agua Fria area, uh, they got uh, just assass- just assassinated by local Indians. And they were told not to go through there. They said, stop. You know, they were just uh, kind of around the Maricopa area when they decided to leave and press on. And everybody in their party decided to stay back. So they decided to move forward. And uh, he had a bit of a Moses complex. He thought he was leading like the people, you know, out of Egypt into the promised land. And uh, yeah, it didn't work out so well for him. And then they kidnapped Olive and her her sister, and uh, turned them into slaves. They yeah, eventually that's... sold them to another Indian tribe. It's that's pretty interesting story. Really interesting because she was the one with the tattoos that would yeah the chin hand. tattoos yeah. And and there's been reference to that in history books, all kinds of things. And you tied that in so well. And that was a yeah. really good video you did. I know you worked Thank hard you. having to walk those back dirt roads. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, guys, check out uh, Small Town Tourist. Um, you'll love his stories. And uh, I, I, I yeah, get a really kick good. out. Um, you know, you got to be kind of brave to go to these little towns because you get the real stories about underground stuff mm-hmm. or anything had to do with mining. You got to be a little bold and say, you know, you look like a, lo- uh, a, a local. What do you know about these secret mines and stuff? And, yeah. and you always get the answer you want, but every once in a while somebody go, well, I'm not really sure, but I can tell you, uh, Wilbur down the road at the <laughs> gas station, he right. knows all about it. And so you can see him kind of chasing all these people till he hits the right one. And it's like, uh, all right, he did a little work to get that information. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a gold, it's a gold mine when you meet a local about in those small towns. It really is, you know, and when I think that's not to plug my own channel, but when you when you go to these small towns and you're traveling, a lot of people just pass through, right? And they don't realize the history that either, uh, you know, occurred in that town or underneath that town or whatever. And so it's really fascinating to talk to people that have been, you know, up in, you know, maybe seasoned, right? They're a little older that know the true stories about what went on within their towns that it's not, you know, so it's important to kind of keep that history alive. And that's the whole, the whole purpose of, of what I do. Yeah. So he does this one show. He's in this little town. It's an old mine town, I believe. And you're talking about the bridge and there's an old man about this. He goes, Oh hell yeah! There's been people hung from here. <laughs> it's like, Hold on. It's like what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that guy was pretty cool. Yeah. Now a lot, I got a lot of flack. They said that the guy was uh, delirious and that he didn't know what he was talking about. But then other people have told me that yeah, he's spot on. That's just things that people don't want to talk about. So, not my job to uncover the undeniable facts, right? My right. my channel is not infallible, right? So, uh, so, but you know, I just talk, I just talk about what they, what they share with me and it's kind of cool stuff. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. The best part yeah, is me like and going Debbie, to a- we explored from one end of, uh, Arizona to the other on the border wall. Like oh yeah. All the way down. Even the border patrol let us drive up the road. 75 miles. Wow. Let us go right next to that wall. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? A wall. It's a big fence. <laughs> it's a big, beautiful wall. Yeah, <laughs> the best you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a giant gate, a giant gate where everybody comes through. Oh, it's a yeah. big. Speaking of that, <laughs> she actually walked oh, across the border and didn't realize it. <laughs> and yeah. I'm, and I'm well, sitting there going, "See that camera there? Okay. They see you." <laughs> First time to Arizona. And he was showing me what the wall looked like, which is not a damn wall. It's a fence that you can see through. Mm-hmm. And so they have they have like your fence and then they have another fence. Well, why would they leave it open if you can't walk through it? So I walked through it. And all of a sudden mm-hmm. you see these lights. <laughs> and oh, he's, wow. he's shitting himself. And I'm sitting there going, what? Why do they have it open? They don't want you to go into it. 
They're probably going to run up <laughs> to you. Go, yeah, here comes Lady, you're going the wrong way. The you're cameras turn in. towards her as she's walking across. See those cameras? <laughs> If you ever go down to Big Bend National Park in Texas, it's right along the border. It's a it's a beautiful it's a big beautiful park, but there's areas where uh, the the Mexicans just come right across and uh, they'll just sell stuff right on American soil, and you can just freely walk back and forth. There is no fence. There's no there's nothing, and so uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's kind of interesting to be honest with you. It really is. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to let everybody go home. But, John, thank you so much for stopping in. We'd love it. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. Oh. Uh. <laughs> John, you're just beautiful. That's all there is to it. What do you want this week? <laughs> like, just coffee. He just wants coffee. I need, I need right. him to move some brick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks for having me, Rob. And thanks for, you know, it's good to see everybody. Yeah, we're looking forward yeah, to, looking to, forward to yeah. meeting you. It's going to be a yes. lot of fun. A lot of fun. So. All right, guys. Uh, we're we're still on air, aren't we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> I gotta push the button. I gotta push the button. Push the button. Uh, okay. Um, I gotta find the button first. So anyway, guys, I want to thank. We're gonna wrap it up for everybody here. Let everybody go home. And uh, I want to thank all the people who dropped in today. It made the show lots of fun. And, yeah. Uh, so uh, next week we'll see y'all. And if you want to come on our show next week, just we'll, we'll you just push the button. <laughs> <laughs> so guys have a great day we'll talk to you later thanks for watching and we'll see you next week this Take care. video is made possible by ranger rob poopy bags available in amazon right now Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks <laughs>